All right, so we have uh, <clears throat> got the values of the ratio of d epsilon EP11 versus the uh, deviatoric stress tensor, that's S11. So you're looking at the incremental plastic strain divided by S11 and the incremental plastic strain 22 divided by S22. And those are the two numbers here. And then we are looking at the ratios of the two and you're seeing that all of those ratios, you can see all of those numbers are one or 0 0.999 and so on. So this goes to show that the Prentel-Royce relations are being followed, which means that, what did we say that the Prentel-Royce relations were? It was that the incremental plastic strain divided by the corresponding term in the deviatoric stress tensor is going to be constant, and that's what we are showing here. So we started off with the plastic strain PE11 and the plastic strain PE22, and then we have our incremental plastic strains now, DE, DEP, and so on. And of course, in order to do this, we had calculated the pressure and then the deviatoric stresses and so on. So now I want to look at one more thing before we uh, wrap this up. Um, and that is, I'm going to make some space to look at something. As you know, the uh, summation of all the plastic strains, PE11 plus PE22 plus PE33, should be equal to zero. That's the um, uh, that comes out directly from the fact that uh, there is no volumetric dilation for perfectly plastic materials. No volumetric dilation. So now I'll take the total plastic strain PE11. Now I'll add to it the total plastic strain PE22, and I'm going to populate this set of numbers right here and do I get the number to be equal to zero and I see that I don't the number is not equal to zero at all in fact uh, I'm getting numbers that are as high as one percent one and a half percent and so on so what happened here what happened here is that although I said PE11 plus PE22 plus PE33 I really did not have a value for PE33 and as you know, when we asked the software, it told us PE33. I don't know what that means. This is a plain stress problem. You shouldn't have a PE33. It refused to reveal the value of PE33 to us, but we can back calculate it because if there is no volumetric dilation, then PE33 will be equal to zero minus PE11 minus PE22. So now I'm actually calculating that third plastic strain PE33 which the software refused to tell me and it's going to be 0 minus PE11 minus PE22. Here we go. And I'm going to populate this table now and now this time it's going to be the third increment of the plastic strain the value of which I did not know because the software refused to reveal it to me. So if I assume no volumetric dilation, then it gives me PE33. And no volumetric dilation makes sense because remember what we said, DEP11 divided by S11 is equal to DEP22 divided by S22, which is equal to DEP33 divided by S33, which means that if you add all three together, you'll be adding up S11, S22, and S33, which by definition of the deviatoric stress tensor has to be equal to zero. So there is no volumetric dilation. So now, Besides PE11, which was output from the software, and PE22, I'm also looking at PE33, and that's that number right there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate a new quantity, which I'm going to call the effective plastic strain. <coughs> effective plastic strain. And I need to look up something in my notes here for a second. I've forgotten the equation for the effective plastic strain. So let me look at it again. Okay. All right. So DEP33 or the incremental third plastic strain will be equal to 0 minus DEP11 minus DEP to 2. Okay, so the third increment of the plastic strain increment is calculated as shown here. So this is DEP 3, 3. 
and I'm going to make it bold so I can see all the three incremental plastic strains. And now I'm going to calculate at each step an effective plastic strain. I'm going to define this effective plastic strain and I'll talk about this a little bit later as D EP effective and it will be equal to I'm going to have to look at my equation again here it's going to be equal to going to be two-third two divided by three multiplied by DEP one one square plus DEP two two square plus DEP three three square and I'll take the square root of this whole thing and I'm going to call this the effective plastic strain. In fact if you look at this definition of ele uh, effective plastic strain it's very similar to the definition of what we had looked earlier as the one mesis stress. Remember we had looked at the one mesis <laughs> stress and that was similar to sh sh that was similar to the that was similar to the uh, definition of the one mesa stress. <coughs> so here we are uh, calculating the effective plastic strain and it's <coughs> two-third of uh, DEP11 squared plus DEP22 squared plus DEP33 squared. All right, I'm going to populate the whole thing. And now that I've calculated the lumped plastic strain or the effective plastic strain in each increment, I'm going to calculate the total plastic strain at each increment. And it will always be equal to the <coughs> value above plus the increment. populate this whole column right here. Now these are all the terms that I've calculated. This is the total plastic strain that I've calculated using DEP11, DEP22. First I had to obtain DEP33 which I calculated as 0 minus DEP11 minus DEP22. Then I calculated an effective incremental plastic strain which was given by this equation. It's two-thirds of DEP11 squared plus DEP22 squared plus DEP33 squared, the whole square root, and then I calculated the total plastic strain. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick up the value of PEEQ that I had pulled out earlier. So let me take this total plastic strain and I'm going to paste it right next to the output value that I had obtained from the software for the uh, PEEQ value. And I'm looking at that right now. And the numbers are 